I want the film release button here. I'm just going to run some molybdenum paste through that so it runs smoothly on the shaft. Fit its return spring. Put that over the post. I want the shutter release button. Fit that over its post. And then I want the top cover. Now it's often tricky getting the shutter release button and the film release button to come up through the top correctly. That went smoothly. Just checking that. Now what I'm looking for now is the frame counter and seeing how far it moves with each adjust each move of the film advance and where those lines are. And it, it's advancing too far by the looks of that. It's, I'll try backing that adjustment off. Let's get that film release button back on there. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, I think that we can actually extend that out slightly might be the answer in this case. Two cocking racks are never quite exactly the same in terms of how far they'll move the frame counter. Just a little bit more I think. All I'm doing is moving this screw here, the effective length of it, so that it pulls through further as the film advance moves. And making sure it only moves one frame at a time. No, it's moving two frames at a time. It's on the numbers. It's moving two frames at a time, so I've got to go back the other way. If it moves two frames at a time, your 36 shot film is only going to deliver 18 shots before the camera decides that it's at the end of the film and locks up, which isn't much fun. That's pretty close there. Yeah, it's just going beyond the number. So I've got to wind that screw in slightly. The most important thing with the frame counter, as I was just saying, is to make sure it doesn't count two frames. Okay, that's spot on. Right, I can put the screws in the top cover. Here we have three chrome plated screws to go in, of course. And we've got one free chrome plated screw, which will be going into the, my spare parts boxes. So two screws at the film rewind end. One at the top cover there. I'll check that frame counter again. Sometimes it moves slightly when the top cover's fitted down. Now oh, that looks good. Right. So I've got the rewind ready. I put the little bush on the top. Stick the knob back on. That's nice. The action's good. 
and at the base of the camera I want the leatherette back. I have the leatherette here and as you can plainly see there's a very dirty patch here. Now I don't know what that is, I know it doesn't come off with naphtha which probably means it's something water soluble, it's probably food stuffs of some sort I would imagine. So I'm going to have to try and clean this leatherette with some uh, warm water and some uh, dish, dish soap and see if I can get this filth out of the leatherette. It's sort of embedded into the surface of it. The other side of the leatherette's all clean and ready to glue back. So I'll be back when I've got that clean, or at least after I've attempted to get it clean. Well that cleaning looks very successful to me, so now I'm ready to glue that back on the camera. Of course I've got to remove the film advance lever. And get some leather, some adhesive on this leatherette. Now the leatherettes on the Retina 2C and 3C and cameras of that vintage are a different material than that was than what was used on the earlier cameras. often is in better condition notwithstanding the fact that it's um, you know five years newer in some cases it's often in better condition than the the other would have been at the same age the plastic must be subtly different it seems to be less affected by solvent which means that it's when you accidentally get some adhesive on the front surface it's less likely to melt the plastic finish than it would do on the earlier cameras okay let's get this in place Now leatherettes shrink over time so they don't usually want to press down foot easily round a raised boss like that so you may need to encourage it otherwise it'll just be sticking up at that point. Avoid the temptation to put too much adhesive on there. If you've got glue on there and it's runny, it will certainly run down in and cause problems. I can put that lever back on there now. and I can put the leatherette patch on the film advance lever. This needed a fair bit of cleaning, it was um, particularly gummy with adhesive, it had the same adhesive that it was uh, had been used on the back door had been used on this, it was deteriorating and it was gone to a nasty jelly like consistency. Let's get this on. Now the leatherette does have a grain to it. To try and align it with the grain in the bottom of the camera. And now I can put the back catch release cover in place got the screws I do this by putting a screw up from underneath through the longer of the two slots supporting that with my finger getting the spring hooked into place now oh, that just disappeared over my shoulder I'm gonna to have to find that well I spent 10 minutes scouring the room with magnets and various things but as it turns out it hadn't gone very far at all. 
and it was right on the bench. So this time let's get that spring in there. Get this on here carefully and get the screw down. That's the wrong screwdriver. Check that it works. All appears to be good. It wasn't a total loss crawling all over the floor looking for things though because I did come across a nice chrome plated screw which I uh, probably lost on a previous occasion. Right, so with that the camera body is done and all I need to do is put the shutter back in place. Okay, so we have our shutter assembly Shutter and lens assembly all cleaned up, serviced and ready to go. So this should be fairly quick. Check this is all back at the infinity position. Now rack that out forward to the forward focus position. Fit my shutter assembly in place. And getting the curved rack in position here, I can see that that's a mile away from where it should be. So I'm just pull that forward and bring that curved rack around. Let's try it there. That's good. I can hear that shutter cocking before the film advance stroke finished, but only just. There it's cocked. So that's good. The retaining ring just goes in from the back. See if I can get that started. That'll do. And I've got my tool here. that up, nip it up snug, any final adjustments, well one thing I need to be sure of is that the point at which the shutter fires is the same point in the stroke of the shutter release that releases the film mechanism so you can wind on to the next shot. So I'm going to squeeze the shutter release very slowly and see if I can pick which action happens first. The shutter released but the film advance didn't release. So I press the film release button, the film advance is now released. So I know that the timing's not right, the screw on top of the film release shaft needs to be raised so that that releases earlier in the stroke. So we'll have the rewind back off. And this of course is an adjustment that you can only make when the shutter's back in the camera and everything else is ready to race. So I will unscrew that screw on the top of the film release by half a turn because I judge it to be a that's the sort of adjustment I think I need there. Let's put the top cover back on. I don't need to screw it back down for this. I can test it without and squeezing it very gently and slowly. I can hear a click, that would be the first stage of the film release. I heard a second click, that might be the film release, it was. So the film release released before the shutter fired. See if I can do it again. 
that's the first stage of the film release second stage of the film release and then the shutter so I want to take that screw back down slightly I'm not going to take it a quarter of a turn I'll take it less than that and see what sort of result we get this is not an adjustment that you should expect to get a hundred percent good all the time uh, ideally you want to release the film slightly before the shutter fires that's the film release and the shutter fired at the point that the film release second click would have happened that's good that's a very good result well in that case I'm ready to close this up so final look over before I put that top cover down for the last time let's take that top cover off check that it's free from fingerprints on the range finder front and rear there's no loose dust get the top cover back down fit the three screws I'll put one on each end and just check my frame counter again make sure I've got that adjusted as best I can possibly get it needs to move forward just ever so slightly Yeah, that looks better. So this camera needed a little bit of work but it wasn't terrible the shutter cocking rack was obviously its headline problem other issues were fairly minor by comparison Just checking making sure the focus is smooth sometimes you'll get a situation where the shutter housing rubs on the inside of the focus scale here now that's because the, let, the shutter assembly is effective you've got a little bit of movement on it from side to side or up and down and if it's off centre sometimes it can rub and typically just giving it a push in the direction you want it to push will shift it sideways and then there's no rubbing so that's good that opens and shuts one of the things about retinas and I've noticed it with this particular one the door here was I think I mentioned earlier was folded in slightly now what that does is it changes the effective distance between the pin here and the hinge pin here and what that does is it means that when the front folds up the lens standard is pushed too far back into the body 
and if that happens the shutter cocking rack can't move freely. So how do you ruin a shutter cocking rack? Well if you've got a camera where the door is a bit folded in, perhaps because it's been dropped, and it is closed, and you advance the film advance like that, you may well bugger up the shutter cocking rack because the rack doesn't want to move because it's been held in too far by the damaged door hinges or struts. And what's the answer to that? It's simple. Do not cock the camera unless the front is open. If the front is open, you can have no trouble. And there's no need to cock the camera with the front closed. You're obviously not ready to take a photo. Anyway, enough said about that particular issue. And that was certainly present in this camera, and it's not now, because I sorted the door out. But there you have it, a nice Retina 2 Big C camera. And this one is ready to go back to its owner, and I'm sure they'll be pleased to see it. So, thanks for watching.